extend and to begin our group. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also be We pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we say to you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit and let us attend to Scripture. So the reading is taken from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 to 
verses 1 to 2 and 29 to 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people, whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to Psalm 67 is, Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let, Let the, the peoples, peoples praise you, O God. God. Let, Let all the peoples praise, praise you. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad. For you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase. And God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. God, be gracious to us. But let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. And please stand as we proclaim the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. On those days, Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. And he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do sit down. It is probably a huge understatement to say that this has been a strange year and is continuing to be a strange year. We are returning to a kind of normal but it is a very new normal. It feels very, very different. The coronavirus is very much still with us. And until the uh, levels of infection really fall significantly or until there is a vaccine, we are not going to go to a real new normal 
any time soon. It's been an extremely strange year for me, of course, because the last four months I have felt I have been in exile from you in Scotland, although in a way I thank God that there was no other time where I could have worked as remotely as that and still had the opportunity to care for my mum. And I, I will say publicly, she is with us now in the rectory, but was unfortunately admitted to Newham General on Wednesday night after a nasty fall. We, we do hope that she's going to be uh, with us uh, from sometime this week. And, and Newham do seem to be pulling all the stops out so that we have some help and support when she does move in. So thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your support for what I have been doing. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your concern. It has really meant a great deal to have felt, felt held in all that whilst I've been going through this strange time, whilst we've been going through this strange time together. And the strangeness doesn't stop there, of course. We have actually seen recently the battered people of Beirut further battered by a huge explosion because of the irresponsible storage of dangerous chemicals near to that populous area. And some of the, the, the testimonies of the people there, of their resilience and their determination, have been enormously humbling um, amidst all the rubble. We have actually seen floods at the beginning of the year. We have seen the hottest temperatures on record. We have seen um, refugees arriving on our shore. And Lord have mercy, we have seen a return to the language and the narrative of hostile environment for migrants. Lord have mercy upon us all. And during the summer, we actually saw in Bristol the falling of an idol, of a monument to slavery. It was surely an event, it was surely a significant moment in history when during the Black Lives Matter protest, the statue of Edward Colston was actually thrown into Bristol Dock to sleep with the fishes. The, the statue will I, I eventually be placed in a museum where actually there will be some context around it that gives a rather different story from the idolatry of that statue being present. And we find this in our gospel today. Those who say, in response to Black Lives Matter, that all lives matter, entirely miss the point. Because the word there is all, and for too long, those of us who have white privilege, and I count myself amongst those, Lord have mercy, have defined what is meant by that universal all and who is included and who is excluded. When the Syrophoenician woman, or as she is called in this translation, the Canaanite woman, actually comes before Jesus, she actually tells him, in no uncertain terms, Syrophoenician lives matter. And Jesus' initial response to her is a very human response, because let us not forget that Jesus' divine image is shown in his full human nature. He is dismissive of her. He is actually downright rude, because the word that he uses for dogs is not a polite word, if you look at the Greek. It is not a word that you actually use in polite company. 
He is downright rude to her, as dismissive of her as the disciples are. However, she is made of stronger stuff, and she gives as good as she gets, and she gives it back to him with two barrels. Using the same word, she says, I might be one of those dogs that you're still dismissing, but we are as good as you, mate. So what are you going to do about it? Jesus' full divinity and full humanity is instantly visible in that he turns like that. In other words, he is bested by her in the argument instantly. And he recognises her humanity and the depth of her faith, and he grants her immediately the deepest desire of her heart, the restoration and the healing of her daughter. He recognises, that is, his own privilege, religiously and racially, and he allows her to convert him. He allows her to insist that humanity actually is wider and deeper and more faithful and more generous than he had first thought. In response to Black Lives Matter, Marco and I have been trying to educate ourselves a little bit, and we have been doing some reading together. We have been reading uh, the Caribbean philosopher, actor, and activist, uh, Sylvia Winter. Um, we have been reading um, the Algerian um, psychiatrist and politician, uh, now gone to glory, Franz Fanon. He is enormously influential. He is quite well known in France. He is much less well known in the UK. And we have been reading um, the, the, the US theologian James Cone, um, his book from the 1960s, Black Theology and Black Power. It is a token, but it is an attempt to re-educate our way of knowing, since both of us are implicated, and I don't think Marco minds me saying this, both of us are implicated in white privilege. Both of us actually need that repentance and to understand. And there is something in Jesus' reaction here that echoed because Sylvia Winter says human is not a noun but a verb. Human is not a noun but a verb. And we constantly need to actually be reframing and remodeling our understanding of what it means to be human persons to be made in the image of God. Jesus, in whom the divine image is completely visible, does it instantly. For most of us, it probably takes a little bit longer to go through that process, and that process is lifelong. Nor, of course, does that process undermine the humanity of all. It actually simply expands it and makes it more generous, makes it bigger, makes it wider. So, as we emerge blinking into this new normal, today's gospel has much to say to us. Racism is not simply violence, is not simply egregious words, is not simply actually prejudice, but is a way of configuring the world, is a way of knowing the world, that those of us who are privileged 
need to unlearn and to see from a different perspective. It is something that we are trying, Marco and I, in our fumbling way to begin a little bit, a little, a little, a little bit. But it is also in recognising that in Jesus, the human one, who died and was buried and rose again, the new humanity becomes fully visible and in the new humanity, the all is not defined by privilege. The all is defined and comes out of, most of all, the marginal, like the Syrophoenician woman. And that is the moment in which the huma humanity and the whole creation is transformed into the new humanity and the new creation, in which truly all people, all people are made in the image of God. All people are God's chosen people. All, without exception. As we blink our way into the new normal, are we ready with our Lord and Saviour immediately to step into that broad and beautiful and big and generous vision where the universal, the all, really does mean all. And we recognise the divine image in all our sisters and brothers. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Creator and preserver of all, of all that is, you have promised to hear those who pray in the name of your Son. Receive now our petitions for your church and grant that by their lives, Christians everywhere may witness to the hope that is in them through the resurrection of Jesus. Grant that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
grant that all who are in positions of authority and power may know and receive your spirit of truth and so establish peace, justice, and freedom for all peoples. We ask you to bless and prosper agriculture, commerce, and industries of all lands for the benefit of the common good and for the relief of all in need. And we pray especially for Lebanon and Palestine and Yemen in this time of crisis. Show us how to care for and use aright the earth resources. Save us from selfishness, greed, and fear, and help us to share generously the wealth which you have entrusted to our stewardship. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who endure drought and famine and who are starving and undernourished. Bless the work of relief agencies, especially Christian aid, and grant, grant that the aid which they provide may reach those for whom it is intended. May the spirit of compassion refresh and renew the whole world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord and Father of mankind, receive to yourself all who have died. Especially, we pray for the repose of Gary Hearn. May he and all whom we hold dear come to the fullness of life which you promise us in your Son's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Look upon us with your gracious favor. Bless our parish, our wives, our homes, our families and friends, and our work. Prosper the life and ministry of this church and grant that our hearts may always be open. And we pray especially for those who have requested our prayers and who are in need. Roxana Bashir, Cassie Martin, Joyce Morris, Graham Postles, and Sarah Vaughan. Lord, in your mercy. And so, aided by the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may we and all for whom we pray be established in your truth and grow in your love. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you're able, will you stand? We are the body of Christ. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. earth is given into human hands and made, it will become for us the bread of life.
closer to you, Lord God, of all creation, to you, to this wonderful boy, and to let this be fruit of the vine and work of the us, that you become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. Please stand if you're able. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary 
St Bartholomew, St Edmund, St Alban, St Mary Magdalene, St Paul, St George, St Martin, and all the saints of our glorious Christ, we may praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. holy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we may follow the path of your will, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. It's so lovely to be back. It's so lovely to see you all. It's so lovely to, to share the sacrament with you, even in these uh, strange uh, times. Um, it, in t yeah. Oh, bless you. Um, so today we've done what the guidance was until last Thursday. It, it's actually now changed again, and it's changed again uh, because public performance guidance has been issued. Now, I'm not quite caught up. I don't know what that means, but I suspect it means we might be able to have a little bit of singing. I, I don't know quite what it looks like. So until I've kind of got up to speed, we'll just stay as we are and, until, because this is what we've done at each stage, gone slowly and steadily, and, and at each stage absorbed the guidance and worked it out for us. So we're as normal for now, but as I keep saying, watch this, watch this space. Uh, there are two courses uh, running in the autumn or in 2021 at uh, the course in Christian studies and our very own uh, John Brown um, I think is is being one of the tutors for that again and um, very much I would recommend anybody who wants to do it to, to actually uh, go to John in, in Ilford um, uh, so if you're interested in that 
uh, speak to me. Um, I, I, you have to formally apply through Die Hardy, but apparently the thunder um, the other day knocked out all of Chelmsford's computer systems. Uh, so um, you might have to wait a day or so. Uh, and the other is the course in, in pastoral assistance. So that is for anybody who feels their vocation is actually more in the pastoral direction of, of actually caring for people pastorally, whether that's formal or, or informal. Uh, talk to Shirley if you want to know about that. Uh, they already have. So, so um, either of those two courses, it would be wonderful if people uh, felt able to, to actually do uh, one of those. Um, we are aiming, again, with the cafe, we are being extremely cautious. We hope to open from the 1st of October. Um, the reason for that is that most of our customers are within vulnerable groups, so we don't want to, the words that come to my mind are bite off more than we can chew, which is probably appropriate for a cafe. Um, so it, it will be a very, very simple offer, and, and then hopefully we can begin to, to, to build it up. Um, there are some meetings coming up. Um, I am hopeful that we can have a DCC here on Sunday the 13th of September. Um, that is the week after our patronal, and I don't quite know what our patronal is going to look like either, but it will be some kind of celebratory Eucharist with whatever we can do um, at, at the time. Uh, the DCC was intended to be the, um, the uh, 26th, 13th, 20th, 27th of September, that will now be Marco's first Mass, um, because obviously the priestly ordinations were delayed. So we've brought the DCC forward to the 13th of September. The PCC will be on the 23rd of September. And we're going to confirm the venues because we might have to do a mixture of Zooming and live. Um, St. Bart's is probably the easiest of the churches to socially distance in, but I'm not quite sure. So note the dates and, and, and watch this space. And our annual meetings will be on the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, Sunday 4th of October. And Again, I hope that that will be at St. Mary Magdalene's, but again, we might have to do a bit of working out so that we can get enough people there safely. Um, uh, so, with that in mind, I would like us to start a process of reflecting on what we've learnt from these strange times. I am determined that our new normal will be different and bigger and better and more generous. And as part of this, I would like to put together this lockdown scrapbook, and it might be that the APCM is the date where we physically gather things, and we also perhaps do some post-it reflecting on what it is that we've actually learnt. I think to have something physical that we can look at and reflect with together would actually be a help in that process. So that's my tentative plan so far, but that it, 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 it might change. Um, if you keep an eye on Facebook, you will actually see um, that, that um, the organ builders are actually showing the progress with St Mary's organs. So it was in bits in the workshop last time. There are all these bits of an organ that have all these strange and eclectic names. So if you are interested in that, then, then do have a look at the Facebook page and we'll try and put a link on our Facebook page to the organ builders so that you can follow that if, if you are interested. And St Mary's are hoping to put a time capsule in the wall when it's actually put back. Um, so talk to Dennis about that. Floor, wherever, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, a time capsule, um, a time capsule there. 
So I, I have thanked you for your thoughts and prayers. I would also like to thank my colleagues, and particularly Marco, um, for, for all manner of things. Um, uh, so, so thank you for, for, for so graciously and so well holding this parish um, whilst I was not able to be here uh, fully. I wish I had Okay, please stand and bow your heads to receive God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in that faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.